insertion of ECRP as the insinuating factor. Clinically, what I found is that the east, uh, extension of your is just as involved in lateral epicondylosis as the ECRP. Okay? So when I'm treating this particular uh, condition, what I want to do is relieve any fascial contraction or fascial tension in all of the extensor groups especially into the extensor digitorum and into the uh, ECRB. Now, as you have said, I think I, I don't know if I told this group yesterday, all of the research went away from tendon problems being tendonitis, away from the inflammatory theory of tendon problems. And we started to say that now tendon problems are all tendinopathies and tendinosis. Now, if there's a recent study that's been done to demonstrate that in early levels or early uh, stages of tendon problem, there actually is inflammatory uh, product inside the, uh, and around the tendon. That inflammatory product is kind of short-lived and then it, be, it, it goes into a degenerative state. Short-lived could be like any inflammatory period. You're looking about you know, three to five days. If it's three to five days, if the person relaxes, which never occurs, uh, maybe a couple weeks if the person continues to do what they're doing. So, what we were doing was we were assigning eccentric training protocols, right? Because eccentric training protocols, we know it increases the tendon strength by upregulating the DNA uh, for the tendon protein. We know that the eccentric uh, programs uh, increase pain tolerance. And we know that the eccentric programs kills the new blood supply that occurs inside a tendon. So whenever you have a tendinopathy, one thing you get is angiogenesis or an influx of new uh, blood vessels into a tendon, and with each blood vessel comes a, an innervating nerve, so the area becomes hypersensitized and painful. So the research has demonstrated that the eccentric training programs will actually kill that new blood supply or those new blood vessels, and that corresponds with a decrease in tendon pain. But if there is an inflammatory component and we begin eccentric training too early, there is a chance that we will prolong inflammation and will prolong the irritation of the tendon. So for early tendon problems, I prescribe PALES exercises, progressive angular isometric loading. Because with isometric training, you're not getting, there's no motion, you're not getting any rubbing of the tissue. So with people with lateral epicondylosis, the, the orthopedic tests when you hold into extension and hold strong, and sometimes you feel pain at the lateral epicondyle. The test is, is almost never positive when it's a serious tendon problem. Usually, you have to go into a flex position and get them to extend. As per the Syriax uh, theory that we were discussing yesterday, where if you uh, do a muscle test with the, uh, the muscle in mid or short range, you're more stressed in the belly. When you do it in an extended position, you're putting more strain onto the tendon. So if you're actually going to diagnose this using that orthopedic test, you would be from flex position and then go into extension. Now, when this occurs, the person will say that's painful. The other test that we use, if you remember, is this test, where we put the patient's finger like this and we get them to extend the third digit. And this is also a test for lateral epicondylosis. But if we always blame this uh, condition on the ECRB, by doing this test and recreating pain, we prove that it's not only ECRB, it's also extensor digitorum, because this is an extensor digitorum test. So getting back to the PALES exercise that I prescribed, I'll get them into the area where it causes the pain, okay, extend, the person says that hurts. I'll get them to back off that angle, and then I'll get them to use isometric contraction. So from here, isometrically contract. The person will say it doesn't hurt from approximately that angle. So the exercise will be to go home and repetitively use full-on isometric contractions at that angle. And then you'll notice that if you let the person go and come back a few days later, they will have gone from that angle to this angle unknowingly. Because you always tell them, only go to where it hurts and then back off. But as you do eccentric training and eccentric loading on the tendon, and as you start to strengthen the tendon, the person can take more and more tendon stress. Via the Syriax thing, the more you go this way, the more you stress that tendon. So as long as you progressively stress the tendon with isometric loading, in increasing increments, the person will eventually get to full flexion with no pain. You can do the same with your extensor digitorum by teaching them to go in this position and extend and hold for as long as they can. You keep doing this and then when that becomes non-painful, then I'll say, now double up your fingers and go in. So what am I doing? I'm lengthening 
the extensor digitorum, and then I'll say extend and hold. And then when they can do that, you might go into three fingers. So each time <coughs> making this extensor digitorum longer and longer, and then I might say go onto your wrist and do the same thing. So I'm progressing the angle. Every time I progress the angle, I'm putting more and more tissue <coughs> load into the tendon. And as I put more and more tissue load into the tendon, because I'm using isometric training and it's strengthening it at each interval, I'm building tendon without irritating the actual sheaths or without irritating the inflammatory process that's occurring. Once the inflammatory process has subsided, now I can go into an eccentric program, which is more of a dynamic motion, and I, and I can go ahead and, and do an eccentric program to strengthen the tendon. Those exercises.